Hello, my little sushi rolls. And today for our Let's Play, we're going to be taking a look at Clockwork Aquario, uh, which is the Lost Westone game. Uh, so from the creator of Wonder Boy uh, and among other things. Um, this is the extensive restoration project that has been taken on by Strictly Limited Games, ININ Games, and uh, various other people. Um, brought to Nintendo Switch by Ratalika Games. So a real sort of collaborative effort between a lot of different people here. And it's, it's very exciting to finally be able to play this game that had been thought lost for so long. Um, because this, this wasn't just a case of finding the original source files and releasing this this was a case of actually rebuilding an entire game pretty much from scratch based on the limited stuff that was recoverable some corrupted graphics and a soundtrack album that was uh, released at one point and you can read all about that over on rice digital if you haven't already so uh, check out our full article on the game we're just going to play it today so you can get a chance to see how it looks uh, the game is already out in europe uh, Strictly Limited's physical versions are supposed to be shipping within the next week or so. Uh, remains to be seen whether or not they'll stick to that because they uh, they have been a little bit slow with some of their past releases, but we shall we shall see. Fingers crossed. Um, and it's coming to North America on the 14th of December, 2021. Not entirely sure what the delay is for the North American release, but it, it's there. Um, so. Um, by the time you watch this, there won't be that long to wait. Uh, and if you're in Europe, you can already play it. So let's go play it for a bit now. And I'm going to sneeze. Am I? Maybe. It's there. Wait. Hold on. <coughs> oh, there it is. Right. Okay. So uh, much like a lot of ININ's uh, other releases that we've had recently, there are a bunch of different modes to play. So we've got training mode uh, where you've got unlimited credits but it stops after stage two There's easy mode where you get nine credits normal mode with five credits hard mode with three credits uh, you can play the bonus stage mini game by itself um, with two players you play arcade mode which is the most customizable mode uh, there's a gallery of a bunch of artwork and stuff you can listen to the soundtrack in either its original or range form um, and that's about it so once you pick a mode to play, we're going to play easy mode today. Um, there's also some options you can fiddle with. So you can fiddle around with uh, the aspect ratio, whether it's one-to-one, -one, pixel perfect, uh, or full screen. But you, of course, you're a monster if you do that. Uh, you can choose whether there's a filter. I can't really see the difference between these. But I keep it on razor anyway, because I like my sharp pixels. Uh, and then there's a shader option where you can have a virtual CRT display if you want. And with this, you can sort of have several different types of virtual CRT display. Uh, so you've got just basic scan lines, uh, sort of scan lines in both directions. So it's a bit more like a dot matrix display. That's a similar one, but a little bit more intense. And that, I guess that's like a an old LCD display something like that uh, and from all that you can adjust the intensity and the sharpness and how curved the screen is so if you want a really really bendy screen you can do that don't really know what trini curve is but uh, well that's what it is choose how rounded the corners are adjust the gamma uh, or put it back to default or indeed turn it off altogether which is the way i prefer to play but uh, if you want a, a virtual crt display to play this in uh, you have one right let us play. So we're playing easy mode, so we have nine credits to play with. So we press start and choose a character. And why wouldn't you choose the cute girl? But if you want to be one of the other characters, you can. I'm not going to stop you. But, you know, if there's a cute girl available, I'm going to play as a cute girl. Live with it. Right. So the way this game works, it is a platform adventure where you jump on things, you can jump on balloons, you can slap things to stun them, and then you can pick them up and you can lob them at other stuff. So in that sense, it's a little bit like a cross between something like Super Mario and something like Bubble Bobble or Rodland or something along those lines. So your aim is not to, not to kill everything, um, but to get to the end of the, each stage. But of course, once you get good at the game, you want to focus on trying to get as many points as possible. And the way you do that is by doing big kill combos. 
by chucking enemies through stuff. Uh, or killing enemies rapidly in succession. Whoops. And you see that there's a Ghosts and Goblins style multi hit thing you can do. Where your first hit causes your character's clothes to get shredded. And then if you take another hit while you're in that damage state, you uh, lose life. But if you pick up one of the potion items while you're in the damage state, you can restore your clothing to how it should be. You might also notice while I was fighting that giant fish that you can also defeat enemies by headbutting them from underneath. So in terms of the available ways to defeat enemies in this, it's actually a lot more forgiving than a lot of other games, but you do have to be very careful about uh, about running into enemies and the projectiles they throw at you and that sort of thing. All right, so that is the first level done and dusted. So we then have this boss to deal with. Oops. I've done this boss loads of times. I still, I still repeatedly forget his pattern. Oops. Now, if you're feeling bold, you can actually take the opportunity to go up and slap him a few times while he's shooting at you. But what I'm doing here is generally the safest approach. Shoots three at you, then chucks some enemies at you. Two, three, slap! Oh, bugger. That star thing there, if I can grab that uh, before I expire, or before it expires rather, it turns you invincible, and then you can just chuck him around. And fire bullets at him, which is nice. <laughs> the game seems to sort of take pity on you every so often and just provide you with one of those if you're obviously repeatedly messing things up, which is quite nice. You see these pink gems I'm grabbing as well. They are adding to that one-up meter at the top of the screen. So when that's full, as you might expect, I will get extra life. Oops, that was the wrong way. You see, rather than the point combos resetting straight away, they sort of they sort of gradually decline over time. So you can sort of, if you lose a combo, you can sort of gradually recover it. To a certain extent, but generally speaking, because the game is quite tricky anyway. I, mean, I wouldn't say it's excessively difficult or anything like that. But it is quite tricky. It was an arcade game originally, after all, remember. Um, you probably want to focus on surviving to begin with. And then once you've memorised the levels and some of the enemy layouts and that sort of thing, that's when you can start... ...looking at optimising your scoring potential. Oops. Potion. There we are. So that's that's how you restore your clothes if you get messed up. As you can see, that the headbutt attack can be very useful in situations like this where you're sort of coming up underneath enemies. Also seemingly worth quite a few points as well. 
worth remembering. And there we've got the invincibility thing as well. And you can see a little bit more clearly there that the invincibility power-up also allows you to shoot. Which is great for... Oh no! <laughs> great for blasting through hordes of enemies, but sadly the invincibility power-up does not protect you from falling down bottomless pits. Ouch. Oh, stop it. It's a really fun game. I really like this. So like I said, when I wrote about it over on Rice, there's, there's probably nothing here that you haven't seen before in one form or another, but... The combination of things that's going on here is what's interesting. Oops. Oh dear. Like I say, don't expect an easy ride cause, just because this is cute. If you've played cute games from the 90s before, you should not be expecting an easy ride anyway, but... <laughs> this one at least doesn't feel quite as absurdly difficult as some arcade games from the era. It's not as bad as some beat-em-ups, for example. But you can still tell what its origins were. <laughs> Very much so. Let me through! Ouch! Silly. Oh no! That was some nice, nice combo action there. It's fun because the, the levels are, are reasonably simple and straightforward, but there, there are enough sort of hidden bits here and there to make exploring them worthwhile. Enough opportunities to score extra points and that sort of thing. Another extra life, very nice. Stop it. Now the stuff that comes up from underneath platforms you have to be very careful about because it doesn't count as you jumping on them if they come up from underneath the platform and you're not in the middle of a jump. So if they come up from underneath and you're just standing on the platform they will still hurt you so you need, you need to be very careful of that. Oops. Smash! So these guys are particularly prone to that. Oops! Oh no! Curse it all! I love the, the giant colourful sprites in this are the, are the real attraction. It's just got that that real sort of Westone magic to it. And boss time again. 
Oh, well, this one's a right old pain. So difficult to get a get a clean hit on this one. See, so does he regenerates the stuff on his sort of outside shell so quickly? But again, it's all clearly pattern based. So once you recognise and understand that pattern, pretty straightforward. Classic game design. Damn it. Uh oh. Oh, I got out of the rhythm. Alright, come on over. Three more hits. Two more hits. Oh, just too low. One more hit. Ah, oh, damn it. Go. Oh. Cock. Hit him. Why are you? Why is this last hit so difficult to deliver? There we go. Jump on him while invincible. <laughs> that is how you do it. All right, onward. Oh shit! I was about to say this stage is pretty fun, but it's also quite difficult. <laughs> Especially when you get the power up. Yes, we love that. Again, this th this stage almost feels like more of a bonus round in some ways because it, it's it's just about the killing and scoring lots of lovely points. Feels very much like a sort of classic Namco, Namco challenging stage on something like Galaga. Lovely potion, thank you very much. Double formation. Boing boing boingy 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 boingy. And there we go. Done. On to another boss. I like this boss. This one is fun because you can just knock chunks off him. Oh, and a power up already. You are really spoiling us. <laughs> I don't know if the harder difficulties make that power up less likely to appear, but uh, if it does show up early enough like that, it can be satisfyingly satisfyingly quick to defeat a boss this level is tricky because the, these enemy arrangements are a, a bit of a pain to get through oh no
Let me up on the thing. Gotta look for a good opening and then take it. Oops! Oh, just... Just die repeatedly. Excuse the wriggling, my ass is going a bit numb. I'm sure you know how it is. See, this is what I mean about the stuff coming up from underneath platforms. If you just stand above these jellyfish light bulb things, then they will hurt you. Whereas if you're jumping, they will not. So don't do that. Oh, you dick. Fine. We're not actually that far off the end, I don't think. But I, I can get to what I assume is the last boss, but I haven't been able to beat it yet within nine credits. So I, I still have some practice that needs to be done, clearly. But uh, as you can see, this stage also tends to mess me up a bit, so... Ow. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Hit the thing. There we go. No, no! If all else fails, slightly cheat. You can't hit about them. Maybe that's the solution. Balloons everywhere. All right. So there's there's this boss. Who's actually pretty easy. Oh, especially if you give me that power up. There we go. And then he buggers off, and then you fall down here, and then I think this is the last boss. I haven't been able to beat this yet because it's really hard. Like, see what I mean? It, it looks last bossy and it's big and it's got unique music. And he throws nuclear bombs at you. It, it's just really hard. So I think what you have to do is jump on the boxing gloves. It's just responding to which one is incoming is the tricky thing. All right, one hit. Two hits. I think maybe you might need to just sort of take a chance and figure out where it's likely to be coming next and take a guess. The timing is pretty constant, I think. Yeah, that's possibly the way to do it. Got two more credits, I think. Oh, if I can just stop getting blown up by the bombs, that would probably help. Ow! 
Oh, come on. I can do this. I can do this. Four more, five more hits. Four more hits. No. Oh. I think maybe dispose of one bomb and then throw the other one. Otherwise, you're likely to get hit. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Two more hits. One more hit. Come on. I've killed myself. But I've done it. <laughs> Thus. The world of Aquario disappeared into the ocean. Dr. Hangio's ambitions were shattered. So there you go. With my Elite Pro Strats, you too can get through Clockwork Aquario using slightly less than nine credits. <coughs> oh, I'm glad I managed to do that on camera. I mean, yes, it was only easy mode, and yes, it took lots of continues to do so. But uh, we did it nonetheless. We got there. I hope that's given you some incentive to check this game out for yourself because it really is fun um it has a simultaneous two play mode as well three different playable characters to choose from um who are all a little bit different they're not hugely different from one another it's mostly an aesthetic choice but they do have a few little differences between one another so there's some variation there and then obviously there's the the harder difficulties there's the arcade mode where you can tinker with like dip switch settings and stuff as well which is quite fun so yeah, plenty of fun to be had with this for sure. And I recommend you do. That says congratulation underneath if you're wondering. And there we go, top of the high score table, where I belong. Anyway, yes, that was Clockwork Aquario. Uh, like I say, European players can get hold of this right now on the Nintendo eShop. Strictly Limited's physical versions are supposed to be shipping this week, I believe. Uh, so if you ordered that a while back, then... Uh, it was actually quite a long time back now. If you did order that a while back, then keep an eye out for a shipping notification soon. Um and north american players will be able to play this from the 14th of december 2021 so just a, a week or so to wait for you guys so anyway hope you enjoyed that i certainly enjoyed playing my way through that uh, it's a fun game that i am looking forward to coming back to and i'm very much looking forward to having it on my shelf as well because it's a it's a real genuine piece of gaming history here one of the one of the first big um game restoration projects as opposed to game preservation projects it's a, a really interesting thing and we should be celebrating and supporting that sort of thing uh, especially in this digital age where things are all too easy to just lose anyway we'll leave that there for today as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next time <laughs>